Hi, it's Handy Andy Tech Tips here. And you know, virtually every piece of technology that I can think of has been drastically improved in the past 30 years. Except that is, digital audio as used for music reproduction. I mean, we're still using the same 16-bit, 44.1 kHz standard that was common over 30 years ago. So that got me thinking, what could be the history of such a respected and long-lived technology? Well, the story starts way back in 1938, when British scientist Alec Reeves patented PCM, or Pulse Code Modulation. It was first used during World War II in a system called Sig Sally that was deployed to encrypt voice communications. As you can see, it was a necessarily complicated arrangement. Remember that the transistor hadn't even been invented at this stage, so sampling of the signal was actually done with hundreds of vacuum tubes. After the war, PCM was adopted for more and more uses, including by the mid-1960s transporting civilian phone calls, but it wasn't considered quite high enough quality for music. This all changed in 1969, when the Japanese public broadcaster NHK developed a stereo PCM recorder running at 13-bit 32kHz, which results in a dynamic range of about 78 decibels and a frequency range which extends up to 16kHz. This development caught the attention of the Japanese hi-fi manufacturer Denon, who were looking for ways to overcome the inherent limitations of analog tape. So they developed their own digital machine and were responsible for the first commercially released PCM record. It came out in 1971 if you can believe that, and it's a jazz EP by Steve Marcus called Something. Just click the screen now to have a listen. Anyway, the next step after stereo had been perfected was digital multitrack. Probably the earliest machine that was widely used was made by 3M and introduced in mid-1978. It featured a stunning, for the time, 32 tracks of 16-bit 50kHz audio, which was recorded to 1-inch videotape, the only medium at the time capable of storing so much data. And it was on this system that the very first digitally recorded number one single was authored. Now around this time an interesting hybrid system of recording was in use to capture the sound that the producer and artist intended. Essentially what happened is that the individual instrument tracks were recorded on 32 track digital, but because digital signal processing either wasn't available or was too expensive, they were actually mixed through an analog desk. It was obvious that somebody needed to invent a new kind of process. Enter Soundstream. In 1976, they introduced what could fairly be called the world's first digital audio workstation. It was comprised of a mini computer, which despite the name was pretty massive, attached to a washing machine size hard disk for storage. And it cost, wait for this, $160,000. And this was actually the trend throughout most of the 80s. I mean, actually playing back digital music quickly became affordable with the introduction of the compact disc in 1982, but making recordings remained prohibitively expensive. One of the first attempts to change this involved the PCM adapter. These were really interesting things actually. They modulated CD quality audio into a standard composite video signal and then stored it on a VHS or Betamax tape. You can Click here to see one of them in operation, but they were big, bulky, and therefore catered to quite a niche market. Another solution, more compact this time but equally ill-fated, came in 1987, when Sony released the consumer-focused digital audio tape, and we all know where that got them. Anyway, to cut the story short, affordable digital did eventually become a reality. By the mid-1990s, we had more powerful PCs and the first generation of affordable CD burners. And the rest, as they say, is history. So I'm Handy Andy, and I really hope that you enjoyed this brief look back into the past. If you did, then please subscribe to my channel for more up-to-date tech videos.